Hello, uh, my name is YJ. Um, I've been dancing for 13 years and uh, my background is Korean, so I am Korean Canadian. So a Korean who teaches K-pop, that's me. Um, hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm the owner and creative director of Vibe Dance Company based in Markham, Ontario, Canada. Um, and Vibe is basically a community of like-minded dancers and our goal is really to help everyone become better versions of themselves through dance. Since being with Vibe, which is a big chunk of my life, um, I have background danced um, for Lady Gaga in the Much Music Video Award. Vibe and a couple of other teams at that time had opened for Headley's concert. That was really cool. I also mentioned uh, working on a kids TV show uh, from Nickelodeon called Make It Pop. That was amazing. Um, there's so many more opportunities and performances that, that we've done, but yeah, more so, like I said, nowadays, we've been partnering with um, more uh, local organizations. So I'm currently working with CICS and we're doing a program for new immigrants. Um, so that's been really cool. We've been working with CCYA on their Jeremy, Jeremy Lin Foundation Celebrity Classic, which was before the pandemic, um, but we hope to pick that back up. But uh, it was a charity basketball game with a bunch of um, Asian celebrities and Asian YouTubers. So that was really, really cool to be involved in that. Um, and very fun and, and very honored, honestly, for, for the opportunity. Also through CCYA, we were able to work uh, with the Raptors 905 and in Lunar New Year of 2020, so just before the pandemic, we had done the halftime show and we actually did a um, Taiwanese uh, artist song and we did a performance, yeah, for a Chinese New Year. So that was really, really cool. But, you know, there's definitely so many more opportunities for, for us and I'm really excited to um, finally open back up after the, the lockdown and hopefully there's no more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed. But yeah, it, it does look like there are going to be more and more exciting things like in the works in the near future. For me, with the vibe, it was just um, all these competitions we've done. Um, we actually won first place for a beatdown. Um, I think in Jazz's perspective, you said it was like seven years in the making. Yeah, we competed seven, seven years. years. But for me, it was like my second beatdown. Okay. And then another notable experience for me personally is um, Vibe used to uh, for like Night It Up, Night Market, Toronto Night Market, all those stuff. For me, it was very noble experience because the Night Market kind of made me realize another Asian heritage, like Chinese street food. I didn't even know about durian and sticky tofu. It was like an eye-opening moment for me that I remember the most, just like not only performing, but like seeing the Chinese street culture within Markham. I thought that was very cool for me. Yeah. I started um, dancing ballet when I was actually two uh, and I've always loved dance. I got into hip-hop dancing actually through Vibe when I was in grade nine, so a very long time ago. And yeah, I basically worked my way up and I worked really hard because I really looked up to the pro dancers in Vibe. And so I, I worked really hard, you know, I stayed longer hours um, just to kind of get to my goal, which was to become part of the Vibe Pro team. And uh, yeah, eventually got there, but I slowly worked my way up uh, to become a teacher, a director of some of the programs. And then later on, I, uh, yeah, eventually took over the company, um, and that was five years ago. I had actually moved to Toronto um, in grade seven, so a couple of years just before high school. And so, yeah, I had some friends at that point, but I was still very, like, very Hong Kongian um, in, in most ways, and it was kind of hard to find friends. And so, you know, with going into different extra, extracurricular activities, especially Vibe, I was able to make some really important and deep connections and friendships. Ever since I was younger, I, was, I loved like moving around, running around, whenever music played, especially uh, Britney Spears, I would just like move my body. 
Um, I didn't really know I had potential in dance until um, in grade six or five, my sister joined this like dance class and then she asked me to help her because um, it was a, also a K-pop cover class. And um, that's when I started like actually learning dance through video and actually found myself like doing choreography, um, doing K-pop covers. And that's how I just, that's how I began dance through it was actually because of my sister, I guess. <laughs> I was born in Korea, but I moved here when I was only four months old, maybe five months, but yeah, like months old, I came to um, Canada. So basically I was, I'd like to say I was born and raised here, basically. Um, growing up when I was little, I was very stubborn. I didn't want to, I just thought, I don't, I don't need to learn Korean. I mean, I'm in Canada. My friends speak English. Um, I used to go to like Korean school. I'm like, I used to hate it. Um, I used to not like watching K-dramas. Like I used to just not want to be part of the Korean culture. And then when my sister asked me to do that K-pop cover, that's when I listened to, it was actually Girls Generation G, was I guess my first official K-pop song. And then as I did that, I because I enjoyed the dance, I enjoyed the song. Because I enjoyed the song, I enjoyed K-pop. And then it just kind of grew from there. And then because of that, when I didn't understand lyrics, that's when I wanted to learn more about the Korean language. And then when I learned more about the Korean language, Korean drama, you know, it just kept like building up from there. And I'm actually super grateful for my sister to like bring that out of me because I used to just always reject my my roots, my Asian Korean heritage, and now um, slowly, like from grade six and up until now, I'm fully embracing, you know, my Korean culture. Now, um, recently, I went to Korea for my um, sister's wedding. Um, before, I used to like hate going to Korea, but now, like um, knowing my culture a little bit more and getting to explore by myself, like all the historical sites and all the. Um, areas in um, Korea, like not just Seoul, but where my family is from, Daegu and Busan, like going back to um, where, like my hometown. Um, again, it's just every step of the way, like it's opening my eyes of these of new Korean culture that even I'm learning, like I'm Korean, my background's Korean, and I feel like I'm still learning more about my heritage. And if you're born here and your background is somewhere else to, you know, don't be, don't reject it. You know, just because we're in Canada doesn't mean you have to speak English, you have to act a certain way, you have to dress a certain way. Embrace your heritage and embrace where you came from. Learn more about it. It's never too late, even if you're, even if you're five, even if you're 50, um, always go back to your roots. And I think K-pop covers definitely does help, especially for me maintaining um, that Korean language with the lyrics, so. That's just kind of my story. Um, dance has always been the creative outlet for me. And just kind of creative movement has always been my way of letting stress out, you know, or just, yeah, kind of even understanding how I feel inside, just kind of letting it out. With reconnecting with my roots, so I'm from Hong Kong, I'm Cantonese. My whole family actually still lives in Hong Kong. But when COVID hit, that kind of hit different because now I'm not able to go back to Hong Kong or at least have the choice to go back to visit my family whenever I could. So that was a that was a little bit tough. And also kind of at the time, our uh, the studio actually had to close down because of the lockdown here. We were actually trying to invest more of the time into creating more online content. So I kind of use the two opportunities or moments in my life together and created some online content that made me reconnect with my roots because I, I knew deep down that I needed something to um, bring me back kind of thing and just reconnect. So yeah, I brought a couple of friends um, in with me to do some challenges. So I taught Tiana, which is uh, our, one of our directors. I taught her a dance by speaking solely in Cantonese. So that was also really fun, you know, just trying to find ways for first gen, second gen um, Asians to, you know, put some creativity and find your own way in reconnecting with your roots. In doing so, it's kind of actually 
opened up some interesting opportunities with um, with Vi because of these uh, because of the content that we have been pushing. I have been approached by a couple more organizations that are you know catered for um, new immigrants, for example. Um, even this, like the the Taiwan Fest, like that's it. Yeah, there's so many new opportunities that are coming through because now I'm more willing and more open to reconnecting and not kind of just thinking, oh, I'm just a dancer. Oh, I'm just like Canadian and, and stuff like that. Especially with the rise of more Asian artists in the mainstream media. Now is more, now is more important a time than ever to embrace it, see what you can do with it and amplify our voices as Asian Canadians. When we were growing up, there was kind of a divide like, oh, you need to be like this Canadian. But there's more youth that are just kind of born here or immigrated here um, very recently. They kind of need to see representation and it's so important. And I am so like grateful that that's like, this movement is growing for sure. And so for sure we need to, yeah, kind of be role models almost. As like Asian Canadians, like sometimes we have that identity crisis. We're not really Asian. We're not really Canadian. So like, what are we? You know. So I think, um, you know, you can be both. You can be both. You can live in Canada, be Canadian, and still know your roots and know your culture. I actually started in grade six. Um, I was actually in LA. Um, again, I didn't know what kind of potential I had through dance. It was just always just like something fun for me. But then I actually did my first audition, which was for SM. I actually really enjoyed the audition process. It was a lot of fun, even though it was very nerve wracking, very um, anxiety driven. But it's at the end of the day, it's kind of like a roller coaster. It's like kind of scary when you're on it, but then afterwards you're like, oh, that was kind of fun, kind of like thrill of it. So. I kept auditioning. Um, I moved back to Toronto from LA, and then through high school, the president of the dance club introduced me to Vibe. Through Vibe, I was uh, they actually opened my eyes to a lot more styles like whacking, jazz, funk, hip hop, and I was able to do a lot more dance styles. Which ultimately in K-pop, they do do a lot of dance styles within K-pop. So it actually went in hand in hand for me to grow as a dancer and also as a K-pop dance coverist. I was actually kind of in like the kind of sweet middle spot where it were K-pop wasn't too popular, but it was slowly growing. It was kind of like that catalyst period. So when I, like my first like three auditions actually in LA, there were actually not a lot of people. I think I remember the first time I auditioned, it was me and then three other people in the waiting room um, for like that whole two hours or something. And yeah, so not a lot of people. I think um, K-pop wasn't as mainstream back then. But as I was auditioning, I can slowly see more and more people. And you know, now instead of doing it one by one, now we have to do groups of 10 because that's how many people there are. And I really liked that I could see the growth of the Korean culture because I am Korean. I love seeing so many people of color, different nationalities, different um, genders, all in one place, all that love K-pop, trying to audition, even if we don't make it. I love to see that community um, and we're all like nervous together. So that's just kind of how the process is. Preparation wise, I think you just have to um, research what they want. For example, um, some companies, they want you to prepare a one minute dance on your own, showcase your best dance style. And some, um, they want freestyle. They're just gonna play any music and you just have to freestyle to it. For freestyle, I actually recommend um, going through some dance classes, knowing some dance foundation, so you at least have the rhythm to freestyle a little bit. And from what I'm told, K-pop companies for freestyle, they don't expect you to do all this like crazy movement. Um, as long as you know how to stay on beat, know how to do rhythm, know how to be creative and just go with your gut, I think that's the best. And then for the one minute preparation, just choose um, any, it can be a cover, it can be your own choreography, it can be a choreography you learned in a studio. Just prepare your the one minute piece that you're most confident in. I know auditions are super scary and they're super hard to get in, but 
I think if you at least just enjoy the process, enjoy the audition, enjoy the nervousness, which is kind of weird to say, um, it's just going to be super fun. I would really recommend auditioning, even if it's not for K-pop. That really also boosts your confidence. The more you do it, the more confident you get. And then last thing for my journey, um, I actually did make it past round two for um, this dance company, which I will not name, but I did pass round two. I was in Korea at that time, but I had to come back to Canada. Um, there was some miscommunication with my parents about school and stuff, so I didn't go to round three, but yeah, that's the furthest I personally went. It's just all about researching and preparing and just having confidence. You got this, guys. <laughs> So we talk about the dance community because, yeah, for, for me at least as, as a studio owner and um, someone who's kind of a community leader in this space, we're trying to foster a space where we are all supportive of each other um, and we are, you know, we try to emphasize inclusivity. We are, you know, Asian, people of color, myself, I am female, um, and so being in this entrepreneurial world, for me at least, it's still a little terrifying and scary, but I know that I have a really, really good team around me that want the best for Vibe, for the community, and we want everyone to grow and kind of experience the same things that we did and, and just like learning some important life skills while just like loving dance so much. For me, speaking about the dance community and then the K-pop dance community, I think they really have to support each other, which I think nowadays um, it is happening as K-pop is growing. Um, a lot of more dance studios are uh, willing to have instructors teach K-pop covers. And like Jess said, as a leader of a dance community, um, I can see her opening up to more K-pop. Um, Jazz is constantly researching and listening to more K-pop songs, which I think is really important for the dance community, for the K-pop dance community, so that they can mesh together and support each other um, equally. In terms of the community here, I feel like it actually, the demand for dance especially, it kind of came in waves. There was a popularity and more students and, and people joining us when there was, so you think you can dance, and then when America's Best Dance Group came out, there was a huge rush of, of students join, joining us. So I think the fact that mainstream culture is slowly starting to embrace dance as the forefront instead of just being background dancers. And that's why I feel like now more than ever, it's very important to set this community so that people know where to go and, some, and a place that they can trust to because yeah, it's, it's definitely growing too, especially with TikTok now. There's so many TikTok dances. With those trends and stuff, it's important to for us to know our know what we're doing, know the research so that we can pass on the proper knowledge to uh, the youth, as opposed to just like, oh, these are the moves kind of thing. We want to, yeah, like I said, just let them know more about the culture and then mesh everything together. Yeah. Of course. I think K-pop, even though it's seen as this like ph phenomenon and like um, it's like rising and rising, um, at the end of the day, for me, I feel like K-pop is just music. It's just um, part of Korean culture, Asian culture, because you know there's also C-pop, there's uh, J-pop, there's like Eurovision for um, European music. Even though K-pop is rising and rising compared to those other countries like it's still music at the end of the day music is always evolving so i think that's just kind of like the comparison of how k-pop can relate to um, older generations there's there's even an older generation of k-pop that has a little bit more of the older sound for the older generation to kind of you know ease into the newer trendier um poppy k-pop that's happening nowadays and through that, when you watch like, for example, the historical Korean dramas, it's pretty like the design, of course, every country still has their own like specialties, but it's still very similar to other Asian countries. So I think little moments like that in um, K-pop, uh, Korean culture, Korean drama can help just bring um, 
relevancy and more relatability towards any generation. Yeah, because even for us, it was a catalyst to mm -hmm. other things. Like for you, it was to reconnect with your roots. For me, it was understanding the culture a little bit more, the current culture a little bit more. And also one more thing, um, you know, Korea as well with other countries has this fellow share of like, you know, some war history despite our, you know, um, yeah, negative past. Um, we can still enjoy um, a, our other cultures, like food, music, shows, movies, you know, there's so many different outlets in this world. And I feel like K-pop is just like a catalyst. I feel like maybe in like five years, maybe C-pop will grow, you know, maybe in another year, like J-pop will grow, Eurovision might grow, you know? So I'm really excited to see what the next culture, what our eyes will open to next. So we're gonna be presenting to you guys a K-pop cover um, from us and three other K-pop lovers. It's gonna be to In The Morning by Itzy. I picked this dance because it really highlights what for me differentiates K-pop and then normal like hip-hop dance competition styles. For K-pop, there's a lot of different solo parts because you know at the end of the day they're singing and then whoever's their part the camera's on them so we try to kind of incorporate k-pop elements into it not just like a straight dance video we try to add some movement into it as well so yeah i think it'll be very fun it's going to be very hard hitting uh very fast kind of like a gangster style um dance i would say we hope you enjoy Guess who loves you? Naya, na. Do I show you? No, yeah, no. Ajik, tiny, anya, nan. Jump the guy, guy, jump the guy, guy, get out the gap, die sack. I'm a silly mommy, who tell you are gonna love me? You're jump jogging, day, body, did a man and tie it. Now I don't know, you might just go. Man, who did me up to no? No, Sarah, I didn't get you, I'm your mommy, no, who? You never know. So we also prepared for you guys um, a tutorial of In The Morning by Itzy. So if you guys want to learn it yourselves at home um, or at a park or something, 
you guys can learn it yourselves. We will be teaching you guys、um, the chorus portion of In the Morning by Itzy. So hopefully, you guys can、um, follow along.、Um, you can always rewind if you miss anything. So don't worry. Use your own pace and see you soon. Hi, Taiwan Fest. This is YJ from Vibe Dance Company, and I'm here with a beginner tutorial. Of a K-pop cover song. Today we'll be doing "In the Morning" by Itzy. We'll be doing the post-chorus/ending part of the song. It's gonna be super fun. So let's go. And here's a sneak peek. All right, guys. Let's begin with the tutorial of "In the Morning," the post-chorus section, as you've seen previously. So, I'll teach the arms first. Super easy. You're just gonna have your hands in a gun position, your index and middle finger out, and your thumb out. You're gonna have it extended up. You're gonna be 45 diagonal, and all you're gonna do for four counts is just go towards the right side. So you're going from left to right. Yes, and with your arms, just have a soft, relaxed, straight. So not super flexed, just relaxed. Yeah. So you're just going one, two, three, four. You're going forty-five in the middle, in the middle, forty-five. Yes. Good job. Now with your legs, you're just gonna jump out into a squat, squat slash plie position. Boom. And. You're just going to go over. One more detail. You're gonna add a little chest and shoulder popping motion, and also with your hips, you're just gonna every count. You're just gonna pop, boom, 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 boom. Yes. You're just going one, two, three, four. It's kind of like you're shooting bazookas. Just to clarify, your shoulder is going back, your chest is going forward, shoulder back, chest forward. Each. Time. Yes. One more detail. Your hips are just gonna go back, 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 back. Yes. Cool. So let's try the first four counts. Five, six, seven, eight. Go. Boom. Two, three, four. Good job. Cool. From here on five and six, super easy. You're gonna draw a V with this gun. So go down, up, down, up. Yeah. You're drawing a V. A V shape. And it should be the size of your chest. So you're here. You're just going da da da. Yes, exactly. Let's go from the top. Five, six, seven, eight. Go one, two, three, four. Go five, six. Good job. Left and right. Yeah, cool. Let me finish all seven, eight. Your arms are gonna go in, down here, and go out. Yes, you're hitting this at、uh, one o'clock, and down here is going to be seven o'clock. So go back in, come back up. Yes, exactly. Every time you go out, that's going to be the count. So you just did five, six. You're going and seven and eight. Make sure you go back in. Boom, 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 boom. Just do the arms from the top. Six, seven, eight. Go one, two, three, four. Five, six, ba ba ba. With the legs,、um, after you did, doom doom doom. There's no legs for this one. You're just gonna bounce it out, draw the V. From here, every time you go out, you're gonna lift up that right leg and land on your left. Boom. Drop that back down. Boom. Yes, exactly. So essentially, you're just going lift and lift with your right leg and your left leg. You're just gonna shuffle down and down. And we're already done our first count of eight. Let's go from the top. Six, seven, eight. Go one, two, three, four. Go five, six, seven, eight. One more time. Five, six, seven, eight. Go. Aze ba me do. You don't. Even no seven eight. Let's move on to the next count of eight. From here, I'm gonna teach the arms first again. We'll take it slow. You're gonna go drop this arm down, and you're gonna lead with this shoulder. Zoom. Yes, it's kind of like you're grazing wheat grass down here. Yes, but in a gun position. Boom. One two two counts. One two. 
On three, you're just gonna switch to the other side. Three. On four, you're just gonna put your arms up. Four. And now you're ready in position, ready for battle. Yes, so you're going swift, swift, and. Yeah, so the second one is a little bit slower. One, two, three, four. Nice. With your legs, you were here. Just drop that right leg and just drag your left. Boom. You're going to slide. So think you want to go this way. Boom. Now just switch to the other side. Go to the left. And then you're going to step in with your right. Boom. Step forward. From here, I'll teach the legs first this time. Let's switch it up. You're just going to step left, right, left. So you're just going to walk left, right, left. And left is four. So let me move back a little bit. So you're here. Boom. Step with your left leg, left, right, left. Make sure that left ends up forward. Yes. Well, with your arms, you're gonna do this little, you know, the TikTok shy motion. Yes, so you're here, boom. You're covering your face. It's too sunny outside with your right arm. Left arm, you're gonna have an M. So you're here, boom, four. You're gonna go five, six, on seven, you're gonna flip it up. Seven and. Yeah, super easy. You just take that M, create a W, and then go back to the M. With the legs from here, first two walks is holding this. Three, four, you're gonna go walk, walk, and then walk. Yeah, so that last step, you're gonna flip it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Try that again from here. Six, seven, eight, go, walk, Walk, tap. One last move. You're gonna drop your right arm down. As you drop it, this W becomes an E. E, so flip it to the side and then back. Yeah, so you went up, down, and then right down. And when you do the right down, drop this arm. And your head is also gonna follow. Boom. With your legs, you're gonna be on your toe. When you flip towards the right, your heel is gonna go towards the right. So you're here. Boom. So everything, head, fingers, and heel, think right side. Boom. So you hit right, and then back down. So let's stop there. Let's go back to here. Six, seven, eight, go. One, two, three, four, go. Walk, walk, up, down, right, down. Let's go from the top. We did two counts of eights. Good job, guys. Let's go. Five, six, seven, eight, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, go. Walk, walk, up, down, right, down. Close to tempo and then let's move on. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, boom, and walk, walk, up, down, right, down. Good job, guys. All right, let's move on from here. You just did right down. Cool. From here, it's going to be a little bit of a freestyle moment, but I'll just teach you guys the movement. You're just going to pull this arm back. Boom. And you're going to scoop this right arm up and repeat that. Boom. So it's kind of like focus on the shoulder. Left goes back. Right goes forward. Boom. Yes. Let me add the legs, it'll make more sense. With the legs, you're just gonna fall onto your right leg, kick that left leg out, boom. Do you see how when my left goes back, boom, I kind of do this like matrix motion where I'm kind of avoiding the gun. That's what you want, boom. And then you're gonna come back up and then fall one more time. Yes, so let's just try that from here. You just did, up, down, right, down, go, fall, and fall. So that was one, two, three. On four, you're just gonna step left, right, left. With these arms, you can just do whatever hands you want, but for those who can't think of anything, I'll give you guys something to do, all right? So when you're here on four, cross that in a gun position again, boom. Uncross that when you step right, boom. And then shoot the gun on the last left. Pa! Make this one big, make this one up top. Yes, exactly. So your arms just go cross, open, gun. Let's try from the falling motion. Ready? So you just did up, down, 
right, down, ready, six, seven, eight, go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When you hit this pose, boom, it's gonna last two counts. Yeah, so it's gonna go boom, boom, one, two. Out one more time from here. Five, six, up, down, right, down, fall, and fall. Boom, boom, boom. Let me finish this off. This is six, seven. On eight, you're gonna take your left arm, swing it back. As you swing it back, you're gonna bend your legs low, right hand goes on the knee. Boom, in this position. And just finish that by looking towards the back. Come back up on one. So you just did four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Yeah, and when you come up, you're just back up to neutral position. Let's go back to this. Five, six, this is seven, and eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. All right, so now let's go a little bit faster. Same part, five, six, and seven, and eight, and one, two, three, cross, open, six, seven, eight, one. You're doing great, guys. Let's do our last count of eight. We're almost done, guys. So you just finished off. This is eight. You come back on one, two. So you're holding that first two count. One, two. Come up on one, hold two. And then on three, four, you um, are gonna step out. I'm gonna give you guys two options. You can either use your left leg, bend that up. So right hand on your hip, thumbs to the front. Left hand is up here, kind of like you're holding a platter very elegantly. Boom. And you're gonna curl that. Or you can just do the other side. Boom. If you feel comfortable on the right, you can do the right. So another review from eight, one, two, three, four. Yes. I like to look at my hands on three, and then as I curl on four, you're gonna look back to the front. Da. Now we're just gonna do five, six, seven, eight. Your hands are gonna go towards the left. It's kind of like you're chopping karate chop. Yeah, you're going to the left, to the middle, and then you're gonna go crown to your head, and then you're gonna take this arms on top, swing it in front of your face, this crown. So this curled hands is gonna become a gun in front of your chest. Okay, so that's just gonna go five, six, seven, eight. So after three, four, on the first two, five and six, just walk on the spot or walk forward, walk back. And I like to do left leg first, zoom, zoom. From here, I put my right leg slightly back and I do the crown. And then I don't do any legs for this. Legs are easy. Let's do a little bit of a head detail. Boom, after you look back on four, Five, you're gonna tilt your head, boom, tilt away. So your head is tilting to the right, hand is chopping towards the left, boom. And then both come to the middle and I just do like a little nodding motion. So I go tilt, nod, and then I go crown. I don't move my head. And then when I do the gun, I go up, down with my head. Yes, yeah, so while this is in front of my face, I go up and then I go down. Yeah, so again, head detail, left, middle, don't move, up, down. Let's add it in from eight, five, six, seven. This is eight, one, two, three, four, go, five, six, da, 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 da. Let's go a little bit faster. Let's go close to tempo this time. Ready? And a five, a six on the eight, and five, six, Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, and five, six. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, cool. And this is your ending pose. Make sure you look like a villain or a hero. Let's all mesh it in. Let's go from the falling portion. Yeah, so let's slowly bring it back. So you just did a uh, five, six, seven and eight and fall and fall boom boom six seven eight one two three four and five six boom 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 
Let's go top slowly and then we'll go faster. You guys got it. And uh, five, six, seven, eight. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slide two, three, four, five. Walk up, down, right, down, fall and fall. Boom, six, seven, and eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, bum, 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 bum. Cool, now let's go a little bit faster. And five, and six, and five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I said bum and do, you don't even know. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four. Walk, walk, up, down, right, down, boom, and boom, and a uh, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, boom, boom, ka, 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 ka. Woo! Good job, guys. Now you guys can follow it full speed with the music. The next segment. Let's go. Alright, good job, guys. Thank you, guys, for following my tutorial, and thank you, Taiwan Fest, for inviting me to share this tutorial with you guys. Um, you guys can always post and film um, this tutorial section. And if you do, make sure to tag Taiwan Fest and Vibe. And I can't wait to see all your videos. Thank you guys. Bye bye. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you Taiwan Fest for having us. We hope you enjoyed learning more about our journeys. And we hope you guys can learn a little bit more about K-pop yourselves. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.